Hey YouTube, it's Dimitri, and today we're going to answer a subscriber's questions specifically on the future of quantitative finance here. So I was going to read this whole thing, but I don't want to bore you too much. Uh, essentially, what the question is here, which I'll put on the screen, um, is they've been talking about, you know, what do you think is going to happen to the future of quantitative finance? Um, you know, it used to be extremely difficult to become a data scientist, and there used to be this minimum required requirement of a master's degree. Uh, and then it kind of evolved and changed. And now it's basically like you can get in with an undergrad. Uh, but, you know, they're kind of wondering what's going to happen with quant finance. And essentially, like they've seen, you know, kind of mixed perspectives on, you know, do you need a master's? Do you not need a master's in quant finance in the future? Where do I think this is kind of going to go? Um, and they understand, you know, that, you know, for data scientists, a lot of companies don't know what they really are. And so that kind of muddies the water a little bit. Um, so basically, what are the minimum requirements here of a quant in the future? Oh, man, these videos, you guys ask the tough questions. Uh, honestly, it's because data science, I think, is a massive joke. Um, <laughs> I'm going to offend so many people watching this, but that's OK. Um, the longer I study data science, the more data scientists I work with, uh, the more I realize it's like, Everybody just wants a shortcut and everybody wants the get rich quick scheme. And I don't blame actual true data scientists per se. I'm going to put a little pin in that for now uh, because there's really, yeah, it's just been degraded down to nothingness. Like data analytics is the same as data science now. Uh, using Excel and VBA apparently is now data science. And everybody I talk to is a data scientist. Like even people that have degrees that aren't even related are like, oh, I've taken a data science course. As if like they're going to like, you know, stamp their resume or stamp their uh, graduate degree like they're a data scientist because they took a course. Um, I mean, it's laughable. It's like me taking, you know, English 401 or something and then being like, I'm an English expert. I'm going to write a bunch of books and uh, novels and, you know, stories and fairy tales, and I'm excellent. Of course I'm not. I'm terrible at these sorts of things. Um, but no, data science and machine learning as a whole is one of those weird fields now where if you look at a lot of the job descriptions, so I've been in this industry a bit here in quant finance. Um, I sit on FinTech now. It's where I'm working currently. Uh, I advise and discuss and chat with people in DeFi, FinTech, finance, traditional finance, quant finance, uh, banks, investment firms. Like, I rub shoulders with a lot of different people, even in industries that are analytical driven, that have full staffed data science teams that are highly rigorous. Um, but the reality is, is that now people have kind of gotten away from data science because when it started being a data scientist was somebody who could actually build models and they took it seriously as an actual science. Uh, unfortunately though, what's ended up happening is that uh, it's degraded down into, like I mentioned, people using Excel and, you know, coding things now in Python and R so simply that they have no idea what's even going on. They can't even address the issues themselves. And so uh, all these firms now, all these big tech firms, all these other companies have started now just changing titles. Like you're now a machine learning engineer or you're, I don't know, a machine learning scientist or I work in AI. Uh, again, they're technically different things, um, but the industry is now coping with this struggle of you've degraded data science what it was originally down to like lowly data work. And there's nothing wrong with that, but to do general analytical data calculations and things like taking averages um, or just haphazardly fitting something like a model to, you know, a bunch of dots on a screen, it doesn't really matter. You don't need a rocket scientist or a quant to do this or someone super rigorously educated and trained with a master's degree from a top university or even a PhD. And so you have to kind of weed through this. This is the one piece of this. This is the, you know, this is what's happening to data science as a whole. Uh, quant finance has gone already gone through this. So quant finance is much more mature. Um, in the life cycle of career development, education, and things. And it is struggling as well here, which I perhaps will make another video on in the future. Uh, but it went through that phase where it was like being a quant was like top paying, amazing, stellar. And then, you know, people couldn't pay you enough. People couldn't find you. If you had a master's in quant finance uh, before like 2007, 2008, it was the dream time to be a quant. So what ended up happening here is that financial markets blew up 2007, 2008. Uh, way too many master's programs have been created over the years. And again, the quality and standard of quants has been degraded down to very, very minimalist portions. Uh, but I think more importantly here, we've had many, many banks and firms. So quantitative finance is 
much more structured and defined. Um, so banks and firms that need people to build models uh, to do things where you're either right or wrong. And if you're wrong, you lose a lot more money. Um, it's easier to see when you're right and wrong. These sort of firms, they've sampled and tried doing the undergrad path. And there are still some, which I won't name here, uh, firms and banks that are doing it. And most firms that have attempted and tried this have failed absolutely miserably. Uh, the ones that are still continuing to do it here in 2023, uh, they've actually split these into two different jobs. And you have like a junior quantitative person and a senior quantitative person. Uh, and realistically, what's happening is junior quantitative people are doing like the data scientists are doing. They're just doing data analytics and simple things. Uh, and then what's ended up happening is they have the actual quants, which now they're bringing in, a lot of them are just PhDs, and they're having the PhDs actually do the model fitting and the theoretical part of actually putting all the pieces together, making sure it's correct and it's going to work. Um, so they can say, and I've seen many of them standing on their, uh, you know, ivory towers saying, oh, we're equal opportunity employers and we're trying to bring in undergrads here. Um, but quant finance is one of those areas where it's like they just can't, boil it down. You have to have so many skills to do it correctly that there's no way, I don't think, to get under the master's minimum here. Now, you could create massive training programs, and I've seen firms do this, where they've brought in undergrads, and then they have all this mandatory education and training, and it's like hundreds or thousands of hours of training um, to get these undergrads to that point. But again, it's an investment piece here. Do firms really want to do this? Some do, some don't. 99.9% .9 of all quant firms don't want to do that because now you have to hire a bunch of training and educational people, which is just expensive. And often it's not worth the effort when you can just go out and find master's students. Uh, now, data science as a whole, let's just break this down more specifically. It's kind of like a weird, I don't know. It's like the little brother of quant finance in many ways, but a lot more general. So I view data science as just like the whole picture of your model developers for a wide area, but unfortunately you realistically only use tools in the machine learning space. Uh, that's kind of what's happened here because if you start backing out the reality of this, uh, when firms hire such as myself in the quantitative finance space, uh, I view data science as just a subset and machine learning and AI as a subset AI is kind of on the border because you can do automation with that. But the model development portions of these as a subset of statistics. So, and then data scientists get up in arms and machine learning people and they're like yelling and screaming, oh, you don't know, it's completely different. Uh, you're still using logistic regression. You're still using OLS. As much as you cry and complain and hate linearity and, you know, oh, what about these nonlinear cases here? You know, you can do all that actually with linear regression. Again, I'm not going to go into that, um, doing data transformations and variable transformations going into the models. Um, but what ends up happening is that they're so specialized into only one area. It's like you kind of have a specialty, but you only can use a couple tools because if you use all the tools, you're not really a data scientist or machine learning expert. You're just a statistician or a quant um, in the finance space. But more or less, I figured like data science was going to take a more well-rounded role, which they have not. Uh, the community itself, I think, is quite... Um, quite toxic to be quite honest with you like people I've met and ran into it ends up in this weird nuanced space where it's like they don't want to use any tools except for those in their space and there's this like I'm on LinkedIn the last few weeks here scrolling and it's like there's so many just garbage pieces of people complaining about how horrible statistics are how horrible econometrics are uh, there's even people in quant finance like this which I don't have much respect for in this aspect though they have other great contributions as well to the industry. Um, but it's like, why would you do anything with half the tools? Like I wouldn't go fix my car and say, I'm only going to use this half the toolbox because the other half isn't good. And this applies even to the stats realm as well. There are many people that are pro and anti machine learning on the stat side. I think though it is starkly different that data science machine learning is very toxic uh, as a culture and a community. And it's very anti stats where on the stats side, I think a lot of us are just more or less like, we're leery. Like, why are you, like, you're doing this new approach. And often I put it in air quotes, new approach, which is typically a traditional approach been relabeled. And then it just takes us time to figure out what you're trying to do. Uh, and then a lot of it's just nonsensical. So the data science approach, I am a hundred percent against for most problem solving. There are 
cases where you could use it. Uh, but the data science approach being, uh, I have data, I need maximum accuracy, do or die, let's get maximum accuracy. And that's what ends up happening. And they even have these, so someone who actually manages teams and runs people and worries about profitability and things that have nothing to do with the model development process. Um, on the management side of this, right? I don't want to have to have models blow up because in quant finance, again, here, it's going back to my finance background. Uh, the issue with this is, is I can't afford to have a model just blow up and just not have a model. Like this might be okay in the investing side, because again, in investing, you have so many dollars. And if you have a model blow up and you just want to close the position, so you're like, eh, the model's not really working anymore. We didn't really lose too much, but it's not working. You can just close that and just hold on to cash. Now on the banking and the sell side of this, uh, we have to make loans to people. That's how we make money. And that's how we employ thousands and thousands and thousands of people at these massive banks. And even FinTech, uh, DeFi and crypto firms as well. A lot of these that are not focused on the buy side, the investing piece of it, but are on the sell side, you have to have a fraud detection model to detect fraud. Uh, you have to have all these operational models to determine optimizations of different sorts of problems like per portfolio positions, for example, perhaps more on the investing side. Um, and when these things blow up, you have to have something there. The problem with the data science approach is that, you know, you just slap something together to hurry to get to a solution and you don't care if it blows up or not because you're just going to redevelop a new model. And there's always this idea that keeps getting pushed, though it's not actually implemented in practice by many firms, uh, which is that you're going to automate this whole process completely. So now you take machine learning and AI and you put them together. And what people oddly don't understand is you can take statistics and AI and automate statistics as well. That's what stepwise regression or stepwise uh, variable selection is. So stepwise forward and backward selection. Uh, you could literally just automate it and have it go out and magically pick variables, throw them in, find the best fit, and then just keep generating model after model after model. And when the models blow up, it just automatically generates new models. Now, the problem with this is in practice, I mentioned, it's just when they blow up, data scientists just go, was it me? I don't really care. It was just a model. And like, I just want to strangle people to death often because I see this everywhere and it's not even like, <laughs> it's not even in firms I'm at. It's like, you see people on LinkedIn posting this. Uh, I look in forums and communities. I talk to friends of mine that are running large teams. I talk to friends of mine that are on the data science side and I'm like, I respect you and you're an expert and there are good data scientists out there. So do not take this as they're all bad. Uh, I have friends that work in the data science community, top notch, um, again, master's degrees, and they are excellent. And I, I bring these up, I'm like, doesn't this just drive you absolutely nuts? Like they fit, do you have this issue? And I'll explain like this person fit a model. There's no consideration for the actual usage of it. It was all just slapped together. And yes, the fit was stellar. Uh, nobody understood the model. Nobody could figure out how dependable the model was going to be. And nobody could tell me how robust the model was going to be. And there was almost no testing because again, why the hell would you test anything when you can just slap it into Python or into R and it will magically shoot out a model and it just gives you magical operational, you know, execution of it. So ML ops as we like to call it. Um, but who cares how it really works? Like it just, and I ask you, don't, doesn't this drive you nuts? Do you not look at the mathematical equations? Do you not need to understand how these things are freaking working? And my friend's like, yeah, it, yeah, Dimitri, it does. It does drive me nuts, but you get over it. And I think that's going to be the difference between, so going back to the, the point of this video, uh, that's going to be the difference here between, I think, machine learning, data science, and quant finance. I think that as we're seeing now, data science is starting to like segment into um, not very technical roles, like simple analytic roles where you can do it in an undergrad. I think the more technical roles are starting to require masters. Again, it's still there. So I think in many ways, if you're on the job search, one easy way to sort them is to look at, does it require a master's degree? It's probably pretty rigorous. If it does not require a master's degree, it's probably going to be data analytics because again, they're all labeled data science. But again, I think the problem with machine learning and data science as a whole is that it has to merge back in with traditional statistics at some point. And just the way that it's set up and operates, um, I think you're gonna continue to see this weird segmentation inside of machine learning. And I think, unfortunately, it's going to take probably at least 20 years or more for the machine learning community to realize, like, we need to know what we're doing before just slapping things in or, like, trying to hurry and get a solution. 
uh, and trying to reinvent the wheel every single day, which is just tiring beyond belief to deal with. And so I think that piece of it, once it finally becomes more mature, I think you'll finally get maybe some new titles where you have, uh, like we're having data scientists now is kind of viewed as like a not real skilled position. And now we have like ML engineers as a more skilled technical position. I think you'll continue to see that split um, where eventually ML will hopefully mature enough uh, as a community and as a field of study uh, that it will come full circle and actually utilize all the tools just like stats is trying to do in many cases. And I don't know how we're going to merge these two things back together um, because I mean the terminology is different and yet it's the exact same thing in many situations. So that's going to be a little bit of a challenge here. But I think you will start to see that again, those that actually need a master's degree will continue to need it. And those that can do it with an undergrad, continue to do it with an undergrad. Uh, I don't think quant finance though is going to deviate down that. I have seen so many banks, so it's a side note wrap up here in a story. I have seen so many banks pushing for this because they do not want to pay the price tag that master and PhD quants cost. Firms do not want to pay it. They're desperately looking for solutions to hire undergrads. Uh, unfortunately though, it just, it never results in good quality models because there's so much effort and work that goes into this. And even as someone who hires and trains, training someone with a master's and a PhD is still a ton of work. Um, even when you hire the best and the brightest from the best programs in the country and the world, it is still a ton of training and a ton of cost. And because of that, it's just easier to hire master students who already have that rigor, who have that, you know, that drive to actually get that graduate degree and have all that additional education that a university actually did for them. And they paid, you know, 70 to a hundred thousand dollars for. So anyways, thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. And as always until next time.